we talked enough about TVB. I think uh, did anybody did not never heard about TVB until coming to Dubrovnik. Anybody? So I assume everybody heard about TBB in one way or another, uh, even you know, bef so before coming to the growing. So that's good. I don't want to spend too much time then what TBB is and what the benefits are, but I want to show a few things. And uh, basically, when you look into the TBB building blocks, it gives you a lot of uh, general parallel programming algorithms, concurrent containers, and uh, like synchronization primitives. Because if you want to use the low-level synchronization primitives, you can leverage them. It has its own task scheduler, and then we, we are keep adding new functionalities. Some people want to have access and control the threads within the threading uh, build a TBB runtime, and uh, because we create our own thread pool, and people wanted to some, I want to have a handle to the threads for whatever reason. So we provided that, and for all is coming, and we will introduce some interesting features in the uh, uh, in the upcoming builds and our upcoming versions. So just to give you an idea, it's really hard to read, and I don't expect you to read this code. Just to give you an idea, I talked about the mini tasks. And of course, this is not the customer <coughs> code. I'm not showing the customer code. This is just a sample code showing you, basically, you create your task. Right, let's talk about here, actually. You do a, you initialize the scheduler, you create the root task, and then you spawn the root task. And then once you do that, you have a thread pool, and thread pool creates a number of threads automatically, which is not equal to the number of hardware uh, or logical hardware logical cores. And then, within your execution, you create subtasks. And when you start uh, creating the subtasks, you spawn them, and then these tasks are basically scheduled into the task queues of each thread. And then these threads start executing these tasks, and whenever one uh, actually, thread finishes all, his, all the tasks in his task, he starts stealing from others. So it also introduces some kind of uh, load balancing. And another key feature, actually one of the nice features of, uh, I'm not going to talk of all the functionalities of what TV provides, but uh, some of them. The main concept uh, of TV is of course task, how you spawn the task and how you run them. Another key piece, I wanted to mention this because when you write multi-threaded application from the parallel domains, people tend to call malloc or some other you know, memory allocation unit, system APIs, and that actually kills the performance because it becomes the single point of serialization because you are going, trying to allocate memory from multiple threads. What you do, you are end up serializing the whole parallel application. So we, uh, threading building blocks provides the scalable memory allocator and uh, is very powerful. There are some ISVs out there who simply actually don't use TBB, but just simply use the scalable memory allocator. So they use their old memory allocation through TBB. It is on Windows and Linux operating system, it is quite easy actually to replace all the calls to memory allocation. And uh, you can simply use the malloc proxy libraries on Linux, on Windows. So you can replace your new delete or any memory allocation, uh, deallocation routines with the TBBs. Okay, so it is right now, we, it is part of the parallel building blocks. We talked about it. So you can actually go to tradingbuildingblocks.org and you can download it as an individual package. But it's also now part of what we call parallel building blocks because it gives you task level parallelism, data level parallelism. And there's also a silk class which is required. It comes with the Intel compiler. And we talk about if you are looking into array notations and working the vectors, uh, notations, etc., and, and don't want to think about threads, if you want the runtime to take care of it, there's array uh, building blocks. But uh, it is part of this package right now. So, Napoleon Total War or Total War Empire, these are the two games. And uh, we also use it in the Shogun 2, which is actually released. And uh, Intel TV was completely integrated into the engine. So it saved an enormous amount of time and money for the development. And Creative Assembly basically avoided having to write its own job queue system. And of course, save them effort on development, testing, and uh, debugging. So of course, this is their code. They say they're confident that it would not be possible, they would not be able to ship on time without using Intel trading building blocks. Oh, oh I'm missing slides. Sorry. Let's do something I need. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> OK. 
Okay, sorry. I had uh, some slides where I showed their code because they're, they're on PC, <coughs> a PC game hardware magazine, there was an interview with one of their uh, product uh, managers, and he basically uh, mentions how, this, because when they first released the game, uh, engine, it wasn't uh, taking advantage of the trading builder blocks, and after some time they posted a patch, and that patch to the engine included the uh, trading building block inclusion, and then they actually, in that interview, I can actually share the link. Somehow that slide has disappeared. I don't know how it happened. But, uh, and uh, basically they're showing it wouldn't be possible to get the, that scale without using the TDB. And uh, I will actually share you that, that slide hopefully later because I have it in a different older version. So anyway, uh, we use basically Intel V2 Amplifier XE <coughs> together with the software developers to analyze, optimize, and uh, provide a scalable game engine and, uh, they, and then they decided that they had to leverage the multi-core and many-core in the future, of course. Then trading building block was a very good alternative for them to you know, cut cost and development time and give them the scaling they wanted. So they used integrated trading building blocks. And like I said, the nice thing about it is the, it is operating system, compiler and processor agnostic. So it makes it quite uh, interesting and a viable solution to, for the people who want to use it out there. Okay, so I hope none of you fall into the PowerPoint coma and uh, because I don't want to put you into funny shapes, but anybody have any question? <laughs> any question? Well, I mean, it all sounds excellent, so before. Are there any downsides to this or are there any um, can it go wrong? Can people design applications that make trading building blocks work badly, or work efficiently? Um, can you think of Can you think of a downside of using trading building blocks? I'm sure it is always possible. And if you use the technology, I mean, technology brings, I mean, good side. But I'm sure if you don't use it the right way, or how is it intended? For example, trading building blocks might not be a viable solution for real-time, the hard real-time systems, okay. because of the, how the scheduling is done, how it is done. But you need to choose the libraries or the, your tools specific and applicable, which are applicable to your own domain. Mm -hmm. So if you choose, start with the wrong tools and a different, you know, <coughs> trying to solve a different problem, wrong problem, then you won't be able to solve it. So how much, how much long does it take um, programmers to get, become happy using TBB? Um, yeah, so it depends on the background of the software developers. Mm -hmm. Because if they're coming, uh, if they're like C developers, pure C, since uh, trading building blocks leverage highly C++ templates, it's similar to STL, and it, it leverages STL templates, similar uh, approach and programming methodologies, lambda functions, etc. So if you don't know any of, anything, any of those, parallel, you know, trading building blocks might become a little bit hard to learn. The ramp up curve might be higher. I mean, you know, uh, higher, but for the C++ developers who are used to writing templates and can use lambda functions, etc., then they can easily transition. Especially people who are familiar with STL can easily transition to using a trading building block. That's not. That's only on the API and leveraging the APIs. But there's also the understanding the concepts, because we provide okay for for loop parallel for. It's simple to understand, but there is also pipeline structure, parallel pipeline structure. So, I mean, if you don't understand, if you try to use them, then you know there are certain concepts which might take longer to learn than other basic general parallel algorithms like parallel four or parallel Y. So, but I don't think we have any numbers which shows okay, this is how long it takes for a certain developer to get familiar on TBB, because we will introduce so many concepts in the future, in the upcoming versions, and which will require probably more. Uh, Intimate, which will require more intimate understanding of the internals or the APIs of the building blocks. So. Okay, any other questions? Yes, you, you show up um, frame technology, and uh, we have seen we need to modify the code. Uh, what's happened in production? Uh, the compiler remove? So, uh, yeah, good question. So, you can always, uh, by default, it is not removed by the compiler. So you basically insert these API calls to our library because you have to link with our library. 
but if you want it during the end of production code or release code or in the gold build, whatever, you want it to be out, then you need to either take your own precautions like if there's okay, you know, you need to put your own pragmas or other mechanism in place to get it out. And, and there are a lot of actually ISPs doing that right now. So they keep it there and they use pragmas or some, you know, switches to turn, you know, on and off. Okay, so any other questions? If not, then I think this is, we are going to give a break. So I'm, I'm sure you are looking forward to it. So, okay, so thanks.